This video will show you how to download, use, and save files with Citrix Receiver if you have a Mac. So go ahead and go to apps.byu.edu and then log in with your NetID and password. And then you should see this page come up. Um, if you're using Chrome, it will search your computer to see if you already have Citrix, and if you do, use that, but if not, click I agree and install. And I've got it already loaded up right here. Um, so go ahead and pause the video if you need to wait for it to install. Um, once you're ready, click install Citrix receiver. And we'll just continue through with the install process. Agree, install, so we want to skip this. Don't check this box, add account. Just go right down here and click continue. Um, you'll come across problems if you do click add account. So go ahead and just pass by that and we did it. So we'll go ahead and close, and yeah, we can move the installer to the trash. Um, so now we're going to go back to our web page and click continue. Um, so if you see this come up, unblock the Citrix plugin. Go up to Safari and Preferences, and then Security, nope, uh, Website. And then go down here to Plugins and check the box for Citrix Receiver. Then, when we go back here and refresh the page, we want to trust it, and it's going to work for us. Um, and for our case in IS201, we're going to be using Access. So when you click Access right here, it will launch it with what we just installed, as opposed to using it um, through the website. We'll now have it on our computer. So once it pulls up, I'll show you how to save a document in the right place so that it's on your computer and you won't lose it. And here it's reminding us to make sure we save it right. <laughs> so I'll just create this blank one and we'll go, I'll show you how to save it. So go to File, Save As, and then Save As again. Okay, so this just means your access file, you have something open. So I'll show you what that means. If you go back here, it when you, we had that table open, if you click the little X in the corner, then um, it will let you save things. So make sure if you have any entities or relationship tables, make sure you close those. So we'll go back to File, Save As, and then Save As again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to, so click that you can read and write them so that you can edit them. And we're going to scroll down to the H drive. You're going to see a few other places like the C or the E, but we want the H drive. The H drive is accessing your own computer so that when you save it, you will find it on your computer. Then click open, and then you can just go wherever. We'll just save it on desktop for now. And we'll just call this test file. And we'll hit save. And then what we want to do is check before we close access, let's check to make sure it actually saved what we think it did. So you can see right here on my um, desktop that we have our test file. Um, Mine has these two little red bars because I usually use parallels, so don't worry if yours doesn't have these red bars. Um, one thing to note is notice how this one's .accdb and this one's .laccdb. This L means locked so that when you submit it, we can't, as TAs, we can't open it. So go ahead and submit the one with .accdb. Um, and if you come across problems while you're saving it, like it says you don't have permission to save it, make sure you do this security warning and enable content. If you enable it, then, and make it a trusted document, so hit yes. If you do that, then you should be all good for saving your files. 